love, I'd love to see that. Welcome to Personal Branding 101, guys. Here I am. I'm Liz Teresa. I'm an online marketer and business expert. I'm based in the Boston area. I've been doing this since 2011. I absolutely love what I do. Hey, hey, Misty. Hey, Kristen. Um, uh, for those of you that are like a little bit like, what does an online business expert do? Um, I help people market themselves. I help people show up online and be really, really visible. I help bring them internet fame because hey isn't that what you really should strive for as a business um but today we're talking both as a business for sure but largely as people because whether you like it or not all of you have personal brands i mean this is just kind of the way that it's just kind of the way it is when you're a person <laughs> you you kind of don't get to like sign an agreement to agree that you have a personal brand it's sort of like you just kind of you come to accept it because it comes with being a human. So I'm now going to open my system preferences. It says to allow for screen sharing. And I now allow later. Let me see if I can do that. Oh, let me know. Do you guys see my screen? Can somebody chat in the box about that? That you do? Yay. Oh, lovely. So I did a good job. Okay. So let's get rid of this and I'll just make this minimize itself. Go away. Um, so I've prepared some slides, some delightful slides. And so as they start to load here, what's so funny about this topic and um, why I'm so passionate about it is because my business really started as a personal brand. Um, and I think all good businesses can certainly start this way, um, but certainly mine did. And I wasn't always Liz Teresa. In fact, Teresa is not my traditional last name. My real last name was Downey, like Robert Downey Jr., but I'm definitely not related because otherwise I'd probably have all the money in the world and wouldn't have to do webinars. <laughs> but it's true. Um, I, I started out as LizDowney.com. And then what was so funny about personal branding and I think it's so worth mentioning as we start to talk about this is this idea of what's in a name. Um, and that might be something that's going to come up for you as you go. And for me, operating under my, my given name, I felt like I wasn't getting a clean slate, kind of, uh, in the way I was showing up online. And so that's kind of where Liz Teresa came from, Teresa being my middle name. Um, and, and of course it also sounds really musical and pretty when you say it together, like Liz Teresa, like how do you, how do you not love that? Right. Um, so yeah, again, thank you guys so much for coming. I don't know if you can see, I have the little chat box open just to make sure I don't miss out, um, on your comments as we go through, feel free to ask questions as we go. I'm just really excited to take you guys through this. Um, so I'm going to hit present to kind of get us started. So beautiful slides. My assistant, my assistant helped me with these. So I can take all the credit in the world, but let's get us started by just talking about what is it really personal branding? So when you say I have a brand, a lot of the times, if you're a business owner, you're referring to your business. So you're saying I have a company, I have a company brand, but like I said, like whether you accept it or not, you have a personal brand just by being a person and then personal branding. When you add the ink to it, you can define it like this. And this is, this is brought to you by the really great people over at Wikipedia. Um, and this, but this is not sponsored by them, but I just like to say they're such great people. Um, but I did really genuinely appreciate their definition, which is that personal branding is an act of branding yourself. It's the conscious and intentional effort to create and influence public perception. So we're intentionally doing this con and with consciousness and likely strategy to influence public perception, to influence and adjust the way people perceive us by positioning us as an authority in their industry, elevating credibility and differentiating yourself from the con competition with the end goal, which is, this is the good thing, right? To advance your career, increase your influence and have a larger impact because yes, even you, even you can make an impact. I know that that might be really like, you might be like, Liz, like, come on now. I'm just me. And I think whenever you inject just into the way that you talk about yourself, you've just got to stop that. You've just got to stop. That's the only just that you can do is the one to say, I've just got to stop saying just because no matter the size of your audience and no matter the size of your platform, you have this a platform is a privilege and it is such a gift um, to spread good. And so when you think about yourself as a person or you think about yourself as a business and, 
And this is what branding can really be about. It can be about what is my mission here? And am I showing up in a way that is spreading that mission, right? And let that just kind of soak in. You might be like, Liz, I, I don't know. I don't know, Liz. I don't know my mission at this time. And that's, that's okay. We'll, we'll get there together. So here are some things that make a brand successful. And then it comes down to really like three big things. You have uniqueness, credibility, and likability. So uniqueness, this is your differentiator. So we talked before about part of, part of branding being, you know, put, setting yourself apart, you know, as a business or uh, rather as a person. And part of setting yourself apart is embracing the fact that you're enough. You are enough to set yourself apart. So it's made up of your image and it's made up of your message. Um, what you say and what you're about. I'm just going to see because it doesn't tell me if there are questions. I just want to make sure there aren't any questions and I'll go back, go back to my slide. Um, and so when I say your image, it can be visuals and photos. There are personal brand logos. And I know that sounds crazy, but a really good example um, of a person who is a brand, and she's just totally coming to my mind right now, is my cousin, Nicole. And I say this because although she hasn't let me make her a website yet, but it's going to happen because I can't help make websites. I love websites. Um, something that she does have that's really cool is she has a moniker. She has a personal brand logo, of course, that I made because it's, it's so cool. I should send it to you guys. So if you're curious about seeing it, just ask me and I will show it to you. Um, but it's because it's like it's her way of, it's on her resume. Like there are ways that the, this can show up even if you don't have a business. And then of course, if you do have a business, how are you showing up in that business? Is your personal brand permeating it? Is it present? Um, so visual, that's part of it. The other side of the coin is really your message. What are we saying? What are we about? What are you actually talking about when you're showing up online? Um, a lot of times it's just, it takes deciding on, you know, where do I want my impact to be? Of course, like, especially this year, holy moly, with all the, the social causes that exist and, and all of the craziness of 2020, you might have a thousand things that you care about now that you didn't, that maybe weren't a big part of your message or your mission when you started. And so that's also to remind you that your messaging and like the the goal of what you're here to do, this is a living document. It's normal to change this over time and it's not cheating on your original idea of what you thought your brand was going to be. Um, but it's also embracing the fact that you do have a brand, you have a voice, right? And that your uniqueness, like I said, and this might be a theme as I feel it's important to reiterate to you guys, your voice is enough and you are enough. Even if you didn't have a business, even if you don't, you don't have a job and you're just a job seeker, it's so important to have a really strong personal brand. Another way to thinking about to think about personal branding is what happens when somebody Googles your name. I had a client um, whose name was very unfortunately shared with somebody um, in the adult film industry. And, and it was, it was really, a, it was just very unfortunate for her um, because there was no way you could ever Google her name and get her to show up. She'd be like the eighth thing because there'd be so many other colorful things that would come before her, right? Um, so being in charge of what, what happens when you Google, that's kind of, that goes into the visibility component of personal branding for sure. So we have uniqueness. I, I've definitely gone over that point. Um, but there's also credibility. So it's sharing things of value to boost thought leadership. Um, also social proof. This is a turn of phrase um, that I use to describe things like testimonials. In other words, you know, times that other people talk about you and say like, you know, if I were a, a professional, maybe in my personal brand, I would want somebody to say, Liz Teresa is really brilliant at online marketing. So outside of business, what about me? could be like something that I would want said by somebody else. That's social proof. And then there's degrees of awesomeness, of course, with social proof. If Forbes says I'm really cool, which they did once, they did say, they said my podcast was one of the top 12 um, best podcasts for small business owners who want to make more money. Um, little plug for my podcast there called Liz on Biz. But when Forbes said that, I mean, like, man, that had so much more clout than when my mom says I'm cool. So <laughs> thinking about showing off your social proof, although like, uh, you know, you're, when your mom thinks you're cool, she does mean it. You are cool. Like, so accept the compliment. But it, I mean, certainly when it comes to sharing things that make you look more credible, when other people say that you're fancy and you're not the only one saying it, of course, it's going to be more believable. 
is kind of what I'm getting at. Um, likability. So this kind of comes in with like, with, with, with how personal brand it's, it sounds like it's a noun when I say personal brand and it is, but personal branding is very much a verb in the way that like, it's about what you're doing. So it's certainly about what you're saying, but it's also about creating relationships. So engaging with people who can, who can lift you higher, like as right as I, as we started here, I was sharing that, you know, my business really took off quite considerably when I met the right person. And it was like when I met the right person who then decided to take me under her wing and teach me a lot of things about online marketing and then introduced me to a bunch of clients. I mean, what a person to meet. We all need to meet more people like that. And it was really the way that I kind of approached that person. It was because at the time I was trying to help my parents' business and my parents owned a company um, here in New England. Uh, in the manufacturing industry, and I was trying to help my parents' business, and this was 20, no, 2010 is when I reached out to this person initially, and then I didn't start my business till 2011, um, but in 2010, I reached out to her, and I said, my parents' business is really suffering. I heard about this thing called social media marketing, and I said it as if I heard about brain surgery, because back then, social media marketing was an extremely, like, cutting-edge thing to talk about, because in 2010, Twitter was only one. I mean, Twitter was only invented in February 2009, so for me to say social media marketing out loud was really interesting, and so I, I asked this girl on Twitter, who I didn't know from anybody, and I asked her because she was an intern, a social media marketing intern. And I figured if you're an intern, you're probably going to be really approachable because you have nothing to lose <laughs> and you're not fancy yet. And then it turned out she was like this brilliant, um, amazing person who ended up lifting me higher. So, so part of this for sure is like looking at people who are where you want to be and have done it and really like befriend them, you know, like, and from a genuine place, it doesn't have to be creepy. Like, I want you to teach me all your answers and then go away. Like she and I forged a really good friendship and we were friends a really, really long time. Um, which brings me to this funny slide. What if I don't know my personal brand, Liz? Well, <laughs> playful slides, right? If you don't know, and then I, and I encourage you guys too, that I have a personal brand based business to think about this as well. But if you don't know your personal brand, ask yourself these questions. What would you like to change about how you show up now? So looking at how you show up, you could even audit your own social media accounts and, and see the kinds of things that you're saying and what it looks like. What, what would you like to change about that? What would I like to be known for? And this is funny too, because if you ask it in an open-ended way, you might realize you never talk about the thing you want to be known for. And so, and then, and it sounds so simple because you're like, well, people should know I do, I do this, you know, or I have this skill or I have this talent. Um, but if you're not actually posting about it, you haven't established enough thought leadership for people to just know that about you. And, and trust me in marketing, um, no one just knows anything. You have to tell people something like a thousand times. So it should be a regular part of what you're talking about, whatever it is you're trying to establish thought leadership for. Um, what am I doing when I feel so focused and absorbed that I lose track of time? What is that activity? That's, that's also called a zone of genius, which some of you guys know that, know that term for sure. So it's kind of, and then in this exercise, I do want to take you, take off your business hat a little, and I want you to think about yourself. You know, it's a little bit of dreaming, um, personal branding. It's one of my favorite things about it because it takes us outside what's normal. Um, and it's also once you're dreaming, you're then saying, well, how am I showing up now? And where is the disconnect? What's, what am I doing that's not resonating with me? And what am I doing that's not actually reaching my people? You know, well, how come I'm not hitting the right notes? And so, like I said, part of this work is finding the fancy people. So who does what you want to do? Find the power players talk to them. I didn't even write talk to them, but please talk to them. Uh, read their blogs, listen to their podcasts, buy their books. Um, what are their strengths and weaknesses? Um, and decide if this is like, if this is a direction that you really, really want to go in. But what I like to say is when you see that person doing what you want and you want to be like them, shop where they shop, read what they read, eat what they eat, <laughs> basically this is a time that you want to learn everything you can um, about what got them to where they are because it will make your journey a little bit less bumpy. Um, I'm just pausing to check the chat. 
Oh, I'm so glad that this is, this is like insightful for you, Lindy. Thank you so much for sharing that. That makes me feel good. I definitely want this to hit the right notes. So what, what will make you and your brand successful? So part of this is being likable. So even if you're horrible, although none of you are, I know everybody that's here, no one here is horrible. Um, but part of it is like, if you're not horrible, <laughs> then do these things. Um, telling the truth. So something that somebody said about me, and I, I saw it was said about me, is that they said no one is as authentic online as Liz Teresa. It was like the nicest thing um, to say. It was one of my coaches was describing me to somebody and saying, oh, Liz is so authentic. Like you always know when she shows up that that's really her. And I think a lot of that comes from, not from being really, really good at anything, but it comes from genuinely, you know, I write like I speak. And um, so when people are reading the things that I say on social media or they're checking out my website and then they actually get to talk to me, they're like, oh my God, she really is like that. Like, that's really what she's like. And I'm like, yeah, you guys. Um, so that's part of that is telling the truth. But when I say tell the truth, it's like, know that your voice is fine to use. Um, I think one of the problems in branding, this doesn't happen, of course, in personal branding, but in branding in general is that companies will try to sound big to sound impressive, but when you sound big, it just means I can't reach you. It doesn't mean that you're necessarily better than somebody, it just means that you're inaccessible. And so you always wanna be using accessible tone. And so it doesn't mean that like, for example, on my website, I joke about the show Friends, I have all kinds of jokes everywhere. You don't have to be funny, but like I said, you can just be friendly. You know, not everybody has to be funny. You don't have to be funny to be likable, but you have to be friendly for sure. Um, and then of course, sharing valuable content. And when you're thinking like, is this valuable? I always like to say, is, it, is, is what you're sharing in response to the question, is this what my audience needs to hear? And, and I think that's important um, because I think sometimes we trap ourselves into thinking that we should share for the sake of sharing, like doing a post that's like, what's everybody doing this weekend? And if you don't care what people are doing that weekend, you probably shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't be asking it. But I think sometimes people do that when they've run out of things to say. And so that's why I'm saying sharing valuable content and in making sure it's telling the truth. This is all coming from in your heart and, and, and from your unique voice. Because this is also the likability of you. This, this, that's the part that makes you likable, but it's also the part that makes you differentiate yourself. Like, like Liz sounds a certain way. Like, I sound a certain way when I talk and when I show up online and my clients are the ones that are here, especially like they don't sound like me. They sound like them and they should, <laughs> you guys should sound like yourselves. Uh, but you also, it's, it's about owning your voice. And, and I want you to think too, when you think about that, owning your voice, where are you owning your voice right now in your marketing? Are you owning your voice? Are you saying what you think you should say? Or are you saying what you feel in your heart is true to you? Okay. And, and it, it's going to be scary that bridging that gap is kind of scary when you're like, should I say what people tell me to say or should I say what I actually feel in my heart is right. Um, and, I, and I'm always going to say as long as it's coming from your heart and if your heart is in the right place, then it's totally you should share from your heart. So consider that like your, your non-necessary uh, permission slip to just say the thing. Go say the thing and go show up for your people. Another way you show up for people and be likable is by engaging your audience emotionally. Um, telling stories from your life. Some of my best posts are just like, they're just talking about observations about my life. Like I think one of my best posts this year was when I bought my house. Um, and I say I, but I have a husband. <laughs> so when we bought our house, it's probably the right thing to say. And when I told that story, the way that I told it, it was basically like when I started my business, I thought I would be successful if only I just could buy an iPad. And I really did. Like I thought if I can buy that $500 iPad, then I've made it guys like that. That iPad's enough for me. I don't know if you guys have a similar, had a similar goal when you started your businesses. But for me, I was like, if I can just get that iPad, then Liz Therese is a legitimate business. And then it became like, okay, I want that MacBook Pro. And then it became like, well, now I want to, you know, buy this whole bedroom set. And then it's like, I'm just going to buy a house, right? And of course, these are, I'm skipping over some steps from bedroom set to house, but I think that you follow me. And so that ended up being one of my most successful posts because it was just, it was an honest, like, wow moment where I was like, yeah, I did that. And, and here in Massachusetts, it's really hard <laughs> to buy a house. It's very expensive here. So it was a super big deal for me. Um, Another, another note about being likable is that you have to be open if you want others to be open to you. 
boom. But it's true. It sounds so simple, but you guys, this is so true. If you're not open and you're not sounding like yourself, people have like an inner BS detector when we read things online. Like I, I absolutely do. I can tell when I read a post, I'm like, they're on their couch and they don't care, but they just did a post because they wanted to have engagement in their group or something. And I'm like, I can read that a mile away. Um, and people can smell it on you if you're not being, if you're not being true to your own self and true to your voice. Um, so part of it is part of being uh, open is being true to your voice. And then the other side of it is engaging with other people. So don't just post and expect the likes to just rake in. A lot of the times to get people to like you, you have to like them. I know it's horrible, right? You have to like go like other people and be their friend. But that's really, I mean, this will lift you higher. I mean, talk about meeting the right people and doing the right things. It's talking to other people. Simple advice, but so valuable to remind yourself that that, that can be really really important. Um, and a reminder too, like I said, you're, you're the differentiator. So going off of that, right. Foundationally, if you're like, okay, Liz, yada, 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 I believe you. I'm special. Okay. Cause I know that some of you guys are like, I'm so special. Fine. So what, um, my, so what answer, uh, would be that your bio is kind of a good place to begin when you're talking about yourself. And so without like writing your own memoir, this, these two little prompts are really kind of nice to get you bios that fit really well in the Instagram bio spot, the Twitter bio spot, and the Facebook bio sections. Um, but if you only had 30 seconds to tell someone who you are, what would you say? And how would you show up to that person? And that's actually, if you could even record yourself, like maybe you're like, Liz, I, I'm terrible at typing and stuff. You could just record it on your phone and then transcribe it or have somebody else do it. And that's a bio right? 30 seconds is a long time to talk anyway. So it could even be like 15 to 20 seconds. Um, or you could just think of three interesting and relevant points about you. Um, of course, with relation to your industry or field, right? Uh, would be helpful. Of course, I think it's okay too to say like, you know, maybe you're like, I'm an expert in the candy business, but in my spare time, I enjoy long walks on the beach with my puppy. Like that could be something that you might say it's okay to have like the fun things, but um, you definitely want to just communicate. Um, these two things, when you have to say something fast, usually you actually say it really clear. And if I give you room to talk, sometimes you talk forever. And that's just the way that people write about themselves because they can't be objective. Um, so don't write to impress. Like I said, write like you talk, use your voice. You're already enough. And I know, and I wrote this that I even cringed when I wrote it, but it's true. And you are enough of a special sauce. You don't have to go get special sauce from McDonald's, guys. You are, you are the special sauce. But I love this slide. So this slide is like a fantastic. I'm like, I'm, I love how I'm just giving myself compliments. So yeah, you guys, here's another slide on giving yourself compliments. No, but seriously, this slide is fantastic because it's like a wonderful to-do list on building credibility for your personal brand. So aside from having a branded.com, and yes, you need this, you should own your name.com, even if you are not personally branded. So anybody that doesn't own their name, please try to get it. Or like, or if somebody owns it, you gotta go get them. Go get them and you get you take it back because it's so important. Um, joining professional organizations and networking groups. These are how you can build um, credibility and thought leadership as a person. Um, reading, reading up on your profession, following and learning from the big deals, um, accumulating testimonials, social proof, uh, like we talked about before, giving seminars, well now webinars, um, writing articles and getting published. Not so hard to get published when there's so many websites. If you really think about it and if you need help getting published, I'd love to share with you guys some, some things that work for me. Um, blogging about your field, joining HARO, and it's, uh, it's an acronym, so it stands for Help a Reporter Out, and the, the URL for them is helpareporter.com, but essentially HARO is a free resource to get um, access to like leads for publicity, so anytime a reporter is like, I'm looking for an expert in food to talk about emotional eating, um, on my pot on a podcast or something, they might send out a pitch for like a, a call for pitches. And then you would just re reply and pitch yourself and say, Hey, here I am. I'm really amazing. And you should, you should give me this gig. But seriously, it, it's a great way to get press without having to hire a PR person. Um, and like I said, making friends in your field, helping each other out. Oh, and in Massachusetts, I am located, my office is in Norwell. 
and I live in Rockland right now. So I grew up south of Boston. Um, and, and what is my bio? So you can learn more about me at LizTeresa.com and I would take you there, but I probably should get through more slides and you could see a little bit about how I frame my long form bio. And then my Instagram bio is really fun. Oh, actually I can put it in the chat box. Everybody can go, I'm like, go buy everything. But no, seriously, you can go to my website and then here is my Instagram. My Instagram bio is lovely in my opinion. I'm really humble too. Um, I'm really modest, but yeah, th those are great questions. I would recommend checking them out. Not that I do it perfectly, but it might give you kind of like a baseline. So if that's what you're looking for, it's a good idea. Um, claim your name, guys. Own it. Own your name. Um, so like I said, whether or not you want to go build a website, although the next slide I'm going to tell you to, um, please buy your name as a .com. Try to accept no less than that. And if you, if you have a big budget for your personal brand, buy all the the, the auxiliary ones like the .nets and the .orgs. It's good to own your name everywhere because you, it's no good when people can just show up as you. Um, and make your profile photo and your bios consistent across all online channels is really important. I also think it's really good to take your username across all of your social media profiles. So of course I have slash Liz Teresa um, pretty much everywhere. And I actually think that there is a service Oh my gosh, I wish I could remember the name of this for you guys, but just know that it exists because it's kind of amusing that it does. But essentially there's a company that you can like, I think you can pay them like 20 bucks or something and they just get your username everywhere for you. So that way other people don't take it, which is kind of nice. Um, so just know that they exist, but if you have a spare moment and you can get your username everywhere, do it even if you don't think you're going to use it yet personally because it's better for you to be in charge of that intellectual property because that's kind of what this is about and I'm not an attorney yada 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 but I will say um you don't want like I mean that problem that my client had where like uh, a woman in the adult entertainment industry had her dot com and she just couldn't have it and that was kind of just the way it was um it was unfortunate and I'm thinking I wish she probably wishes she bought it like when she was like I don't know when, when it was 1995 and you could buy like cat.com when everything was still available. Uh, so yeah, like I said, you knew I was going to say this. Sorry, you do need a website. It also it had said before that you should just hire me to build you one, but I thought it was a little bit too much. So, <laughs> but if you're serious about this, and I think if you're here, you ought to be, uh, you do need a branded website with your own domain name, even if you are a personal brand. And this really is to just be cognizant of, of what will happen when somebody Googles you. Um, because if you are a professional in the world or if you own a business, it's best to be, be in control of like, of like, you know, that intellectual property, your name. I mean, like, man, that's getting down a rabbit hole, but like, I like to think I own Liz Teresa because that's my name. That's what I go by and all that, right? And so if I didn't own LizTeresa.com, but I was just out here as Liz Teresa and I was saying crazy things people say like, ah, Facebook page is enough. And I'm like, oh, okay guys, okay. We all know it's that's crazy and that's not true. Um, because you, you really need something to elevate your thought leadership. So if that's what you're in this for, if you're like, I wanna be a leader in my space, I wanna be well respected, it's kind of like, well then let's be happy about what they're gonna find when they do Google you, right? And even if you had to make your own website, right, you can still do it in a way that's super clean and super nice. I mean, Squarespace has beautiful templates to keep things really nice and tidy. If you are a person that's going to go make your own site, it's not going to be as fancy as if like you hired somebody like me, but that'll be completely professional. And so I want you to think about how am I showing up and like, maybe even like, well, while I'm talking, it wouldn't even be a bad idea for you guys to like, make a list of what's giving you the itchies. I always say like whenever you're reading over your own copy or language or social media postings, if you have moments that give you the itchy feelings, you know, that's where you need to address something. And it's the, it's like an, it's an itchy crawly feeling. Um, so sorry, you guys do need a website. Um, and so when we start thinking about creating content, so now that you have the brand, you have the bio and you're like, Liz, like, this is cool. I know my name. <laughs> That's part of it. Um, I have professional images. These things are all important. And then you have this moment of like, you know, what am I, what do I say when I get there? Like, how do I actually provide the value again? Like, cause this is the thing that sometimes people will hit their head on the ceiling of this question of like providing value. 
Um, and so this is to remind you that anything that you do spend time creating should be reshared and repurposed. So reshared, repurposed two different things. Um, this is also, if you've ever heard of the, the expression to leverage your content or let our content that you can leverage, the idea is that once you write something on social media, perhaps a Facebook post, it doesn't have to die there. Like it doesn't have to be like I posted it, it's been used, it's over. Um, a lot of times, and my friend Ashley Mason taught me this, is that you can share the exact same thing and just tweak it slightly in multiple different places on social media and not be a big jerk to do that because you can't believe that. Some, I mean, a lot of times if somebody's seeing the same thing twice, they don't even know that they're seeing it twice because we're so inundated with marketing all the time and we're not paying attention to things <laughs> properly. So when I say reshare, that's really genuinely copy paste. You can reshare things. Um, repurposing, where that kind of comes in, is that if you have a Facebook post maybe that you're really proud of, you've reshared it, it can actually be adapted into a longer form piece of content, like a blog article to add to your website or to publish on Medium um, if you don't yet have a website. But get the website, get the website, it's so important. Um, so this is, this is to say, recycle, like you recycle now, hopefully, gosh, I hope. So I feel like in this day and age, most people do recycle your words too, your messages and the really valuable things that you say. Um, I actually, when I think about this, I also think of my business coach and she has, uh, she has an assistant doing this for her, but her assistant is going through every piece of content she's shared over the past like two years and writing new shares from the old ones. So they're slightly different. Um, and, they, and then they're scheduling them so she won't have to update anything manually unless she wants to for like for that long of a time. I think it's for like another two years or something. And so and she, so she just doesn't have to do anything and yet she'll look really professional and intelligent. So this stuff can be recycled. This is to take some of the weight off your shoulders and know that you don't have to create every single day. Um, and a lot of times too, providing value can come in the form of sharing other people's content. It doesn't have to be the Liz Teresa show all the time on my, on my channels. A lot of the times it is, but it certainly doesn't need to be. I'm not against it all. Um, sharing really good articles from, you know, TechCrunch or Mashable or something that has news and business technology that, that feels really apt. So if there are online publications that you follow for your industry, I think it's totally okay to incorporate that stuff. It's not, not weird at all because you're not, I mean, like you're not this ace reporter out there all the time telling everybody new information. So, so content can come from you. It can be repurposed and recycled, which is fabulous. That means you're not writing 365 posts in a year, <laughs> hopefully. Um, and if you have something really great, if you do leverage it into blog format, consider submitting it for publication. When you get published, it elevates your credibility big time. Um, the one thing I will say about getting published is that you should just be cognizant of when you apply to get published in certain um, certain media outlets, and I'm trying to remember, I, when I got published in Elephant Journal, this is just, just an example, that they own my content. So like, I could never have taken that and put it into a book, which not that I had big book plans, but I think I would have liked the option or something. So just be cognizant of what you're signing when you do sign on to contribute if something is accepted, um, when you're signing your rights over and everything like that. And so, of course, if you're like Liz, please don't make me do things. I don't know if I want to write. That's okay. Because like, like I'm saying here, if writing doesn't come naturally, does talking? Because clearly it does for me, guys. But like, it's really about choosing your medium. Um, I once heard this quote, and I love it. Um, it's not a lack of resources. It's a lack of resourcefulness, especially now um, with what exists. There's blogging, of course, but like I write here, there's Instagram, there's Facebook Live, there's podcasting. Um, for me, even though I like to write, I hit like the best stride when I started my podcast because it's so much more natural for me to talk, to talk through ideas than it is to just write about them. Um, and then you're like, okay, Liz, I, I bought my name.com. I've claimed my usernames. I have professional photos. I'm showing up really well. My bios look nice, but now I'm tired. Like, do I really have to follow through and do stuff? Like, like go say things and provide value. And like, if providing value makes you sad, I mean like, well stop because you're providing value. That's really nice of you. And it should make you excited. 
Um, but people that just have profiles, like it says here, they're a dime a dozen. They're just people, right? People who say interesting things are not just people. They're interesting people. Okay. So like your content, this is where you get to show up. So like, that's where your heart is going to be. That's when you're saying things in your voice and you're, and you're showing up as yourself. And additionally for SEO, when you're published or featured somewhere, you get backlinks. When you're staying updated, even on your social profiles, Google actually watches that stuff. So like Liz Teresa never looks like a dead asleep brand because we don't stop. We're always saying something. We always have something going on. Um, and we're always, we're always trying to provide value. So as you're creating valuable content, this is also an indicator for, for folks who do find you. They're going to see your stuff and be like, oh, she's the kind of person that solves the problem that I'm having right now, right? It's that feeling of, you know, that is, I want a piece of them because it sounds like they're doing a thing that I need to be a part of. It's, it's, it gives them the ability to know that they should follow through with you. And so if you do nothing, if you take away nothing from this, Please take away this mistake that, of course, I made. It's when I started out as a personal brand, um, I was like, I do everything. I do flyers. I do websites. I do Facebook. I do this. I do that. And I was like, I couldn't calm down on my website. And in my head, I was like, well, of course, if they see I can do all these things, why wouldn't they come to me? Or like, if you're if you're not a person that makes websites in your in your scenario, maybe you're um, a healer, and you're like, well, I I do this kind of healing, but I also do that, and I can also feng shui your house, and I can also do all these things. Um, that's not the way that you sell the thing. The way that you sell, sell yourself is to just share the valuable content and how those things all go together. So when I say picking a niche, it's more about what is the problem that you're solving? So what is the thing that they're typing into Google when they're like, I have a problem. I have a website I hate and it smells and I would like someone to fix it. Hopefully I would come up. And of course I'm being a little, a little jokey, but I think you, you know what I'm thinking. Um, so here are my last tips. These are really, really important guys. Don't put anything in writing you don't want reshared a thousand times. And so this is a tip for branding, but it's also a life tip, guys. The emails, some of the emails I've got, I'm like, were you drinking when you said this to me? Like sometimes you get these emails. I wanted to teach on email etiquette, but the problem is nobody likes being told what's right and wrong or what to do. Uh, so this is like a reminder to be you know, be cognizant that yes, you are showing up and you're using your voice, but like use it responsibly because your platform is a privilege. It's, you're so lucky that you get to show up and be visible. And I love helping people do that, but don't put anything in writing you don't want reshared. Okay. And then deleting the old pictures of you drinking in high school and college. No one wants to see those. And like, I don't even think you probably enjoy looking back on those because there's probably a lot of old boyfriends and girlfriends in there and you don't want to see them either. And then be a good human, use your platform for good. Like I said, you are so, so lucky to have it. And if you do nothing, check me out sometime. We could be friends. Follow, go follow me at, at Liz Teresa. I'm at Liz Teresa everywhere. You can go, go to LizTeresa.com, send me an email. Um, I do free 15 minute chats anytime. And, and I, oh gosh, I so, so enjoyed this. So I'm going to hit stop recording.